This is Jürgen Steinmetz, Eturbo News, Hawaii News Online. You can listen to a heartfelt announcement and press conference by Mayor Kirk Cardwell today. After the state recorded 140 new coronavirus cases, three new deaths, and several cases recorded in City Hall, Honolulu, Hale. The mayor warned that Hawaii could become another New York, and we all need to get together. We, the people, need to work together. This is his message. And after a short break, please listen to it. We're in the Honolulu Hale grounds where this past weekend we had a lot of excitement with our first all-state uh, mail-in ballot election, and the results are just unbelievably positive and we're grateful for everyone participating in democracy. But today we have um, more announcements to make regarding our battle with COVID-19. The biggest battle on anyone's horizon, on everyone's radar, no matter whether you're running for mayor, whether you are serving as mayor or as uh, serving as the chair of the Honolulu City Council, we have major decisions to make and we're making some right now this, this, after, this morning. Number one, Effective at 4.30 this afternoon, Honolulu Holly will be closed for business in terms of interfacing with the public, except for very limited purposes of coming in to make payments that you absolutely need to be made. In fact, one of these doors will be open and there will be a security guard there to check you in for the limited purpose of going up to one of the windows to do a, a major significant payment that you need to make. Number two, we're testing all of our city employees on the municipal grounds. That means Honolulu Hale, that means Mission Memorial Complex, and that means the Frank Fossey Municipal Building, the high rise. Dr. Miskovich is here, he's conducting this testing. Last week he did it for the Honolulu City Council at the request of Cherry Kaika Anderson, and he tested 87 folks, and he can talk more about it. Sadly, we do have clusters here at the Hale, at least 10 or nine or 10 in the uh, Department of uh, Budget and Fiscal Services. And we even have a case in my office, the mayor's office. For that reason, we have testing everyone, including me, I've now been tested. The results should be made available by the end of today. And after this meeting, I will have my briefcase. I'm heading home and quarantine at home until I get my results back. Finally, we're asking all city workers to work at home wherever possible, like we did back in March when you did the complete lockdown. Telecommute, stay away from each other, protect yourself and slow down the spread of this virus. Having said that, it does not mean that our satellite city calls, call, calls will be closed. In fact, they will remain open, but for appointment only for critical things like renewing your driver's license or getting your driving test completed. We continue to do this because of the rigid, stringent protocols that we have in place and because it's appointment only. We wanna keep the basic functions of government open wherever possible. Also at the municipal, Frank Fossey Municipal Building, if you're coming to do city business at the Department of Planning and Permitting, you can come in and drop off your plans, you can pick up your permits, but that's it. Come in, drop off, pick up, and leave. With that, I would like to just say that Currently, we have 47 city employees who have tested positive for COVID-19, 10 here on the Holly grounds. With that, I'm gonna ask you, Jerry Kaika Anderson to come up and say a few words. I wanna thank him for his forward leading leadership starting last week, starting to take action. And I'm grateful that he did and working with him, we continue to move forward together, both the administrative branch and the legislative branch. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for your working with the City Council. We greatly appreciate your administration always working with us. We'd also like to thank Dr. Scott Miskovich, who's been a continued partner working with all levels of government as we do everything we possibly can to keep the people of this state safe. As the Mayor mentioned last week, we found that we had a case of COVID-19 here at Honolulu Hale. It was in the office of the City Clerk. Upon hearing that, I reached out to Council Vice Chair and Kobayashi, and we both decided that it would be in the public's interest as well as the interest of everyone who works here at Honolulu Hale to initiate testing
for our Honolulu Hale family as soon as possible. I reached out to Dr. Miskovich and he had a team here on the ground inside the city council chamber setting up testing. We tested 87 people last week, Thursday. And my understanding is from that testing, we had three positives in the office of the Honolulu City Clerk as well as in the office of the Department of Budget and Fiscal Services. I then contacted Mayor Caldwell's office and the mayor worked with Dr. Miskovitz to set up today's testing that you folks see happening here behind the bus. That is in full swing. We expect to be able to test many people today, well more than 100, and get those tests back very rapidly. As Mayor Caldwell said, he's expecting his results this afternoon. I understand from Dr. Miskovich, we may be able to get some folks' tests back even faster if in fact some folks are feeling symptoms as of right now. As such, with everything going on, Council Vice Chair Kobayashi and I have decided to postpone this coming Wednesday's City Council meeting scheduled for here at Honolulu Hale. That meeting will instead be postponed to at least next week Wednesday. We are still looking to determine a meeting location and a meeting time. We're hoping to be able to conduct that meeting here on the Honolulu Holly grounds or at least the Civic Center. But once we have further information, we will get back to folks as we also need to make certain adjustments for state sunshine law purposes and ensure that we give equal access to the public to show up and to be able to offer their testimony. We will definitely be having testimony available remotely over the web as we've been doing for some months now. I am also urging effective at the close of business today, that all legislative branch employees, to the extent possible, work from elsewhere outside of Honolulu Hale. This covers the office of the Honolulu City Clerk, the Department of the Office of Council Services. I'm also asking that all of my colleagues do everything possible to have their staffs work outside of Honolulu Hale. We started reaching out last week Thursday in coordination with the mayor's office for a thorough cleaning of Honolulu Hale. That has already started. The goal is to clean all of the city council areas, the chamber, the conference rooms, the committee room, as well as all of our private offices, and to also clean all of the other workspaces, including the public areas, the restrooms, the area you see here in the courtyard, and all of the other areas that are accessible not only to employees, but to, but to the public. We're working on getting all of that done as soon as possible. My understanding is that work already started on Friday. Our collective team here at Honolulu Hale is working very diligently to keep folks safe. I do ask, I can't stress this enough, please continue to abide by the proclamations that have been issued by Governor Ige and by Mayor Caldwell, as well as to all the directives issued by the neighbor island mayors for those neighbor island communities. Please wear your masks in public. Please continue to distance yourselves when you need to go out in public. And as I just mentioned, keep those masks on. If you start to feel any symptoms, please contact your healthcare provider and arrange to get tested as soon as possible. If you're even feeling symptoms, but you haven't taken a test, please isolate yourself in your home. Stay away from other people to the best extent possible, even from your fellow household members, if you can. But schedule a test as soon as possible if you're starting to feel symptoms. And if anyone has any questions, we do have our city number that's set up. Please continue to reach out there. We're also going to have Dr. Miskovich come up and share his mana as to exactly what's going on. My office is also able to receive communications 768-5003 or ianderson at honolulu.gov by email. Mayor, if it's okay, I'd like to bring up uh, Dr. Scott Miskovich, please. Thank you. Um, thank you, Akaika, and thank you, Mayor. I was uh, called, as uh, Council Chair Anderson said, to address their repositives. Actually, I'm very proud of my team in there. He called us in the morning. By that afternoon, we had what we term our strike team in place to do those 87 tests. They were positive, as he said, three members. 
and then there was immediate coordination with the mayor and his team and that led to the coordination of the event we have today. I will pass on that we will actually test over a thousand people here today. I think we're already on track to do that and we're prepared to do that. We're going to stay as long as it takes to test everyone that is necessary. Uh, some things that are really important. Uh, we're working in coordination with the, um, the, the city and county's health leaders, uh, Dr. Amori and, uh, and, and also some of the EMTs and paramedics. Immediately once we had the positives, there was an identification which you have to do, our immediate internal contact tracing that they led with the uh, staff here to say where were they, who did they work next to. And there was very rapid, very effective communication which I'm very proud of this team throughout. That's how you do it. That is why then as we started to track where the other positive individuals were in an environment like this or next door, people work and they go to different areas and it was determined the best and most effective way to give these employees that are, that are uh, working for the city and county and the people of Hawaii knowing that they use these public spaces was to do broad scale testing. So we created the broad scale testing. We're going to follow the same guidelines as we would. We're going to continue this through until we work with the mayor and, and council chair Anderson that we can look at the people of Hawaii and the employees here city and county and say that these facilities are disease free and we follow them through using best practice and protocol. So this will be the beginning of what we're going to do and we're not stopping until we can give everyone that assurance. And again, great support from everyone down here that is understanding that we act now, we act swiftly, and um, we're not gonna stop. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Some of the things I just wanted to emphasize, if I haven't already, is we are sanitizing all of our offices here in the city and county of Honolulu municipal grounds. So the Holly, all offices will be sanitized that have already not been sanitized. Chair Anderson had his offices sanitized. We've already done BFS, we'll be doing the mayor's office, the MD offices, and everywhere else in between. We're also gonna be going over to the Mission Memorial offices and sanitizing those along with every single floor in a Frank Fo Fossey Municipal Building, uh, just as an extra precaution. Finally, in closing, we are taking strong action here in the city and county of Honolulu to combat COVID-19. We have shut down bars. We have now closed our parks. And we're asking people to really comply. We mandated face coverings everywhere. We can turn this around if we all do our part. Starting with me and then starting with you and all of us working together. We can do this. And that's why when I find that we had to shut down more bars this weekend, that continue to operate, including hostess bars and strip clubs, not good. Citations in the hundreds by the Honolulu Police Department over the weekend, one wedding on a beach, what were they thinking? Inviting their guests and friends to start off their life together and getting each other sick or jeopardizing getting each other sick. And the last thing that is causing some complications, the issue is some of the state hiking trails are open, making a blurred line where there should be a bright line and we're gonna be visiting that issue with the state of Hawaii to see if they can reconsider opening up their hiking trails because the police department is getting flooded with calls. Since it's the only thing that's open, there's no physical distancing, no mask wearing, and a lot of people bumping up against each other. We need to have a bright line, unfortunate as it is, to make it easy for the police department to enforce, but also to protect each other. With that, I open up to any and all questions you may have for either Chair Anderson, myself, or, or Dr. Miskovich regarding this COVID-19 pandemic that we're fighting. Mayor, uh, how can you justify having the election on Saturday when there were 10 cases here and you had done previous testing at Honolulu Hale? 
How can you justify having the election here at the Halle? And do you regret that decision? Um, you know, we checked very carefully in making the decision to keep this voting center open on Saturday. And what we knew, know is that the people who were infected were on different floors, not on the ground floor of the Halle. Um, and two of the offices had been dif disinfected. But more importantly, down here on the ground floor where we have the testing going on right now, there are very strong protocols in place. And in fact, we're using the same plexiglass uh, barriers and, and the social physical distancing play placards and everything else in between because the city clerk in a great abundance of caution, knowing that the pandemic is here, knowing that there could be positives coming in to vote, that they needed to protect each other. And so I, I believe that adequate precautions were undertaken to allow a very critical component of our society to go forward, and that is voting for those who wanted to come in and vote in person. Now, many came by to do the drop-off right here on the curve. They didn't come into the holiday. They just pulled over and dropped in a drop box. Or if they did come in, they drove in here, and we had drop boxes on both sides, right and left. So very little contact. Those who came in spaced apart, face coverings, all the barriers in place, and we believe that that protected the public on this most important of all rights, the right to vote. Yeah. Uh, you know, there is still confusion amongst the bars and the brew pubs. Uh, we talked to Hawaii Beer Lab in Pearl Ridge. They said the liquor inspectors told them they were fine as long as they were doing self-serve beer and food. And then they got shut down by HPD on Sunday night. And there are others who are saying, we're just caught in this limbo because we're trying to do the right thing. What can you say about that? General, I'm, one, I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm really asking everyone who's impacted by this order to follow the guidelines and the order. Follow the order. It's not time to go into the gray and try to skirt around the law. It's about saving lives. We have another death today. We're not only reporting the number of positives, we're daily reporting the number of deaths and it's going up. As far as these cases go, there, there is more liquor inspectors inspect for issues regarding serving of alcohol and theirs. The police department can go in and also with the Department of Health enforce other things like not wearing face coverings, not practicing good physical distancing. So I don't know the specifics of the case you're, you're describing. And so I don't want to get in and speculate on this. But there's no doubt in my mind that our liquor inspectors are doing a first rate job in enforcing the laws they have to enforce. And there's no doubt in my mind that the Holy Police Department is taking extraordinary effort to enforce the laws under the order at a time of great challenge. And I'm grateful for both of them being there. Without them, these orders mean absolutely nothing. And so I'm asking people to follow it. 28 days, as the chief said last week, you know, please folks, follow these orders. Let's get the virus under control again so we can all reopen. And it's all hands on deck at this point with everybody. Hey, Mayor, a question from Annalisa at KITV. Um, do you think employers should dis disclose to their staff if one of their employees has tested positive for COVID-19? I support more disclosure than less is why I even disclosed the case in my office. My office has just five people who work in it, in the mayor's office. I think disclosure is important so people can take action and protect themselves. I don't believe in naming the person or violating privacy rights under medical privacy under HIPAA, but I do believe that more disclosure is better than less. And in fact, the city throughout all of this has been disclosing cases in every department um, so that people know where the virus is and know that they have to take the precautions to protect themselves and their loved ones. Question from Gordon Pang. How is this closure different from the one that was in place earlier this year? Well, the one in, in place earlier this year was a complete shutdown of the economy. All business, all restaurants were shut down. All businesses were shut down. All office buildings, all retail, everything was shut down. And now it's a more uh, strategic shutdown, parks, certain types of businesses, bars, those kinds of things. And we're gonna watch now, I'm holding my breath in the next couple days to start to see, of course it takes about one incubation period, but if this has the intended effect, it doesn't mean we have to go back to a complete shutdown. And that outcome depends on all of us at the end of the day. He's, and also asking about how is the closure of Honolulu Holly specifically, if it's any different? Um, it's. 
it's a little different in that we're allowing people to come in and do certain types of transactions. Initially, it was a complete shutdown, and then we started to open up where the security guard would allow certain people in. Um, so we're not going all the way back to the early days, uh, but pretty much there except for, appoint for, except for people coming in for very limited purposes. And of course, Satellite City Halls, initially we shut them down completely. They're now open for essential government work like renewing your driver's license or get a driver's test with all the protocols, appointment only. Uh, question for Dr. Miskovich. Uh, Dr. Miskovich from, from Gordon Pan, would you advise those who showed up to vote or drop off votes on Friday and Saturday to get tested? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I completely support the decision that was made to allow the facility um, to stay open. You know, again, when you look at the individuals, it's a respiratory virus. This opening over here, high ceilings, the air can move. Um, it's not about the touch surfaces. Things will not last in this type of environment for a long period of time. There was cleaning, uh, there, the way this uh, voting was done. It's more that person-to-person -person transmission. As the mayor said, there's high likelihood is that a person who would come in that could do it. So the, the fact that there were positives, since I also know where the positive individuals were, there was no risk from those positives to anybody that entered the building. So I have no questions that it was okay to do. Okay. Thanks, doctor. Uh, question for the mayor uh, from Max Rodriguez at KHON. Why was there a delay in informing the Honolulu Council of at least six known COVID-19 cases? I don't think there was a delay. And in fact, um, Chair Anderson, and he can add to it, um, when you know, we knew of these cases, he started taking action. We started to take action. Um, and we're now announcing other actions that we're taking. Okay, and Chair Anderson, if you have anything you'd like to add? As soon as the administration became aware of the positive tests that we had in the clerk's office in the council support division, uh, it was that same day that the administration shared with us the positive tests uh, that they had. And the, again, the question was uh, why the delay from the administration to council in regards to the six cases that administration found prior to Thursday. But in my opinion, the administration came to council as soon as the council uh, and the clerk's office made aware of the one case that we had in the clerk's office. I'd just like to touch back on the question regarding the elections and having the elections this weekend here at Honolulu Hale. I want to be clear that the cases that were found positive in the city clerk's office were in the council support services division located on the second floor of Honolulu Hale and not in the elections division that is located on the first floor of Honolulu Hale. So had we had a positive case or cases in the elections division, working with the mayor, we very possibly could have come to a different conclusion. But as far as we're aware, there were no active cases in the elections division in the clerk's office. Thank you. Uh, question for the mayor. Mayor, can you clarify how contact tracing is or was being done? So for our 47 city employees that have tested positive, um, we are doing our own contact tracing through our, our, to our, through our physicians, Dr. Mori and her team. And uh, we're looking to how we can supplement it and help her. Of course, Chair Anderson and I both supported hiring 300 contact tracers with our CARES money to assist the state. That was rejected, but we're now looking to see what else we can do to supplement here in the city and county of Honolulu, how we con can contact trace, and of course, protecting privacy all the, all, every step of the way. Uh, and Mayor, Gordon Pang asking if we can get a breakdown of the 47 positives, the 10 at Ahale, and where else? He's asking where else? So we can give it, I can't give it to you off the top of my head. Those 47, Gordon, include, for example, our firefighters that we now know are over 10, um, both out on the east side and then in Kalihikai. So um, those are some of them. We also have them at DDC. I know we have a positive there. Um, but we can give you the breakdown of what departments there in EMS, I think, has had, um, HBD has had, but we'll give you a breakdown of those. Okay. Uh, for Chair Anderson, uh, from, Casey, from Casey Harlow, HPR, earlier this year, remote meetings was an idea that was floated for council affairs. With recent events, will remote council meetings be a possibility for this month? We've already been conducting meetings where members participate remotely. We've been doing that for, we have been doing that as a council for some months now. 
that is still a possibility to continue that. But according to the state sunshine law, our attorneys tell me that even if we have remote meetings, whether they be council meetings or committee meetings, that the council still needs to provide a physical location for the public to come and offer their testimony, unless the governor or the mayor issue an absolute stay at home proclamation, which hasn't happened and I'm not sure if and when that will happen. Thank you. Uh, another question for the mayor. Um, readers, first, readers asking if private pools and private apartment buildings can stay open. So if you own a pool in your, if you're lucky enough to have a, or fortunate enough to have a pool in your backyard of your home, it can remain open. And along the same lines, if you're a condominium association where all the owners of the condominium have a part in, interest in the pool, those pools can remain open with 10 or less. And it's incumbent on the condominium association to make sure that is complied with, that we don't end up with a cluster because that was not strictly enforced. Pools at hotels, closed. Pools at clubs, closed. Uh, pools that are like, you know, sw swim clubs or tennis clubs, same for tennis clubs, closed. Bright line, uh, no exceptions. Question. Another question from Jurgen Steinmetz. Military arrival had continued without quarantine, even for relatives, while all of us had tried hard to follow rules. Is this now changed? Also, what do you know about, if anything, about the attack, or sorry, excuse me, outbreak at Pearl Harbor? So, I was always troubled by allowing uh, military families to come in without all the protocols that us local folks have to comply with when we come back from the continent. But the good news is General Hara last week revoked that exemption. And now military families must follow all the protocols that the rest of us follow. Now, if you're an actual active duty serving uh, personnel, you don't have to comply with those protocols imposed by the state and the city, but you absolutely must follow everything that SYNCPAC issues. And I understand they have stringent requirements also. Uh, and as far as, what was the other part? Um, and the, the outbreak at Pearl Harbor? Well, I, I don't know anything about, the military has been very cautious about the information they share. Um, again, I do believe that that information should be shared, no matter what government you are, whether you're the federal government, the state government, or county government, or private. We should know the information of where this virus is so we can take appropriate action. Uh, a question from Sam Spangler. Uh, a couple of entrepreneurs out of Princeton called the U Experience are trying to set up a bubble in Waikiki for college students from around the country to spend a semester in a hotel setting. The founder went on CNN and claimed to have approval of local government and hotels already set up. What are your thoughts and have they gotten your approval? Number one, they haven't gotten my approval. Um, it was mentioned briefly in a conference call I had with the visitor industry last week. Um, I told them that we're interested in bubble travel um, and that we'd be willing to explore it further but no approval has been given of course there's a lot of checks the boxes that would have to occur and right now um, if college students came in and were staying at a hotel uh, they would have to quarantine for 14 days just like everybody else and they couldn't go to the beaches and they couldn't go to bars and uh, they'd have to comply with all the other orders that are in place uh, from Gordon Pang have the have any of the other positives resulted in any other facility closures? And also, have there been any positives at FMB, the Annex, Satellite City Halls, or Driver's Licensing Centers? Um, other than the closure to the public of the, the Holly today, I don't know of any in terms of municipal buildings. I think some of the fire stations could have been closed for disinfecting, and all, all members of the firefighters in that, in that station going somewhere else while it was disinfected but that's about as much as I know at this time, Gordon. And how many total employees work at Honolulu Halle? Approximately 1,500 total employees work on the municipal grounds between the Frank Fossey Municipal Building, Mission Memorial, and the Halle. Um, I've been told at any given time there's about 1,100 here because people are still working from home. We allow them to do that. And we made available to all those who are working here today to come and get tested. And judging by the lines and what we see, looks like many, many of our employees are taking advantage of this opportunity. And I want to again thank Dr. Miskovich for making this available to us. And uh, from Breton at KITV, uh, do you know how many police citations were issued to violators over the weekend 
for do not gather rule or beach park closures. And, and for reference, Mayor, I just got an email that said over a thousand HPD citations were, were issued, and they'll okay. speak about it more this afternoon, or they'll have more to release this afternoon. But if there's anything you'd like to add, so I, one, I want to thank Chief Ballard and her entire force for stepping up and, and doing their part. And over the weekend, I did talk to Chief Ballard and um, was seeing what it was like out there. And she told me they were in, issuing hundreds of citations. We now know that it's well over a thousand. And I, I think being the transparent chief she is, she will report to the public on what they're seeing. I did share with you some of the things she told me, a wedding on a beach with this order in place, um, which I find extremely troubling as she does also. And um, I'm just grateful they're there helping make sure. And I'm hoping that people get the message at this point that this is for real and that there are consequences for not following the order and we'll see less citations this coming weekend. I uh, one from Casey Harlow. I just spoke with the owner of a local brewery. He mentioned that they want to be compliant but didn't get an explanation on why they're being shut down. Do you believe inspectors should explain why a brew pub was shut down so owners can be compliant and fix what needs to be fixed? Yes, I do think there should be an explanation and if they're not getting it, um, we welcome them to reach out to our COVID hotline and we'll make sure that someone gets back to them as to what the conditions are for reopening. We want to help people where we can. Uh, from Eddie at KITV, previously you said DOH told you there was no need for the county to hire hundreds of their own contact tracers. What was your reaction to the recent news about DOH struggling to track COVID cases? Extremely troubling. Uh, closing statements? And I wrote this down driving to work this morning. You know, I'm concerned that if we don't get a handle on the number of cases and it continues to go up, not as much as last week, but goes up. And at some point in the very near future, we are gonna max out our ICU units and more people are gonna be dying. And this thing can break wide open. And we could become New York. You know, I think about you, the people, we the people, including me, all of us, and what we do as the people of this incredibly beautiful, fragile island. We need everyone to come together, everybody. And yes, we need to share information if it can help. We need to come together to save us, each of us, our loved ones, not allow another person to die. And yes, to save our economy, but without a healthy, community you do not have a healthy economy you know this is not like just getting a ticket and it's not about a blemish on your record at the end of the day it is about life and death if we keep working together and most all of us are working together we can break this we can beat this we did it once can do it again and do it better. That I want to thank everyone for protecting yourselves and your loved ones. Mahalo. Thank you for listening and we hope to see you soon. In the meantime, you can listen to all our podcasts and videos on livestream.travel, www.livestream.travel. And please don't forget to read eTurbo News. Aloha.